Hi, my name is Elaine, and in today's video, I'm talking about the hidden costs of getting a dog. So dogs can be expensive. They're not as expensive as, say, a child, but they do come with some level of expense. Before we got our dog, Frank, I tried to work out what expenses we could expect and spoke to some dog owners that I knew. And it seems that the costs of getting a dog uh, come into two categories. So you have your outlay costs at the very start, and then you have your, I guess, your monthly, yearly maintenance running costs of, you know, keeping your dog running. While you can do everything quite cheaply, there are certain things that I don't scrimp on and other things that we do. And there are also a lot of hidden costs which I had not anticipated. So our dog has already cost us a lot more money than I thought he would. However, he brings us so much joy. But if you are considering getting a dog and you're wondering about the cost of it, this video is for you. It has all the information that I can give you. Again, with my video, it's gonna be quite breed specific, I guess, to a greyhound. Um, and greyhounds tend to need a little bit more things than other dogs, but I will try to make it as general as possible. And if you want to know more about Frank and you're new to my channel, I'm just gonna stick a card up wherever and in the description bar below. Um, and I've got some videos on Frank that you can look at. So as I said at the start, we have two categories of costs when it comes to getting a dog. So that's why I'm gonna split this video into startup costs and running costs. And I have my notes here. If you see me with my phone, I'm not texting. Um, so startup costs. Let's talk about the things that you need before you get your dog. So this is gonna vary from breed to breed and it is worth researching your own breed and especially if you're going through a particular maybe breed specific charity, you could ask them for advice. We were given a list of things that we should get um, or were recommended for us to get. And again, online there's loads of resources. So obviously you're gonna to need to get a collar for your dog. So these collars, collars can vary in price and you can get like really cheap collars, you know, for maybe five or 10 euro. And then our particular collar that we got was 20 euro, which um, it is a specific type of collar. It is called a martingale collar. And the reason being that Frank has to have this particular collar instead of just a regular greyhound collar is that with greyhounds, their necks are bigger than their heads. So if they're pulling on the lead, they can kind of shimmy out of their collar. So they have to have this particular collar that as they pull, the collar tightens. So it's called a martingale collar. We got ours, which was a handmade collar with a gorgeous pattern on it. We got it from a company called Hound Lovers in Drogheda and they're online and they also have an Etsy shop and it cost us about 20 euro with the postage and packaging included. Um, again, there's loads of different shops online selling loads of different types of collars and it's really up to you as an individual dog owner and what type of breed you have you know how fancy or otherwise you go you can also get dogs and get your dog a harness and a really popular brand is i think is a k9 something um you get a harness and there's loads of harnesses in different pet shops and again maybe check and see if your breed maybe if you have a bigger breed it might be better for them to have a harness to stop them from pulling but it's either or um in ireland i think according to legislation you need to have um, an id tag so it is good to you may have to get a collar and a harness the next thing then is the lead so again, so many different types of lead and so many different price points of the leads. For Frank, we got a very simple rope lead, which was about 1.2 meters long. We were looking for 1.5 meters, couldn't find it. So it's a 1.2 meter long rope lead. It's blue. Uh, we got it, I think probably was about a tenner, less than a tenner. We got it in a shop called The Range, which is in Ireland and the UK. The one thing that we couldn't get was, you know, those, uh, retractable the, the long kind of leads it was recommended that we don't get one of those because of the type of dog a greyhound is but i know that they're quite popular with smaller dogs and um, little terriers so again it's up to you about how much you want to spend on your lead and another thing that we got was you got a little poo bag dispenser it's like almost looks like a little pill bottle and it has poo bags in it and i would highly recommend you getting that to put and attach onto the lead it just makes things so much easier when you're going out. You don't have to worry about bringing your poo bags with you. They're always with you. And the only thing you have to remember to do is just change the role of the poo bags inside. And you can get biodegradable ones, which is the ones that we have. Next up then is the wonderful world of dog beds. So, so many options here. Frank has three beds, technically four, if you include his old bed. 
that I'll explain in a second um, and technically five if you include the sofa so when we first got Frank it was recommended to us that you get a double or a single duvet with a duvet cover on it and you fold it over and that the dogs like to sleep on that it's nice and big sized for them and it's really comfy so that is Frank's kitchen bed he also has a pillow and a throw pillow on it because he likes to put his head on pillows then he has his upstairs bed which um, originally was uh, this kind of cushion that we got in a pet shop but it just wasn't durable and it wasn't big enough for him wasn't comfortable enough for him so that's been relegated to down in our conservatory but we got him a cot mattress so we went to ikea and we got um the ikea cot mattress was about 40 euro for the size i put the size of it here so you can see which one we got and it has a cover that's removable that you can wash but we also got um fitted sheets to go over it and then we throw a blanket on top of it to make it really comfy and i think frank really likes this bed it's also it's memory foam so it's kind of orthopedic for him and if you know anything about greyhounds they're skinny little bodies so the more cushion that he has the better for when he's lying down then we also have an outdoor bed which is a water resistant one which we bring outside and um, but we have these sun loungers and he kind of tends to sit on those with us as well and then sitting at the moment on top of the outdoor bed is his old bed which was again it cost us about 50 euro in a pet shop and it just it was our bed fail when you are going to buy a dog bed especially if you have a big dog it is i would recommend that you go into a shop to buy it or um, at least you go into a shop to measure the dog up for the bed also if you have a new dog maybe don't get the most expensive bed first because if dogs are nervous or if they're puppies they can tend to chew or with greyhounds sometimes they can tend to scratch at stuff so maybe go for your more your cheaper bed at the start to see how your dog copes with the bed and then you can move on to um, something that's more expensive and as well to try and get a removable cover if you can dogs can be messy if you can't just make sure that you always have a throw over it so in case the muddy paws come in they're not going to destroy the bed each time the fourth thing then that you need to get of course is feeding dishes so with greyhounds they have to have specific specific feeding dishes so you get a raised feeding dish and this helps to prevent um, a really fatal thing which is called bloat in dogs and um, it means then that he doesn't have to crane his neck down to eat and the food is at his level so it's going into his body better so ours were quite cheap we got them in the range I think they cost between 15 and 20 euro and it was a stand that you can raise up and down and it comes with metal bowls again you can get any type of bowl and if you have like a little small terrier or a little Jack Russell you don't need to put it up on a height you can just get any cute bowls there's such a range but i would recommend that you always have two bowls so one for water and one for food and if you can at all even get a third bowl that's one thing that i wish that we had done so that you could always have one in the dishwasher like one of the food bowls otherwise what we do is we just clean his bowls every single morning and um, so that is the fourth thing that you have to purchase and then sort of the fifth thing in the essentials of when you get a dog is toys have to get your dog toys especially if you're getting a new dog it's really good to get them comfortable in the house gives them something to do such a range of toys unfortunately for us everybody uh, that we know bought Frank toys when he came to stay with us or live with us and Frank doesn't really like toys so we have this container that is beside his bed and it has loads of different toys in it and what I've been doing is I read that if you have too many toys the dogs kind of get a bit overwhelmed so what I've been doing is I put the toys away and I've been kind of pulling out a toy one by one just seeing if he's interested he shows interest in some of them he doesn't in others um, one type of toy that he does like is ones that dispense treats so he has a snake that we like stuff treats into loves that he has Kongs, which are really amazing when you, if you're leaving your dog alone for a period of time, you can fill it with food and it keeps your dog distracted and they can chew on it and the rubber is really strong. You can get like a variety of sizes, you can get a variety of types of rubber, you can get puppy ones um, and they're really good just for if you have a dog that maybe you're worried about them having separation anxiety. Another thing he has is a licky mat, which is like a rubber mat with all these spikes on it and we put peanut butter on it. So if we're just going out to maybe the gym or something and we're only gone for an hour and um, we'll give him his peanut butter butter licky mat. So Frank likes toys that involve food whereas most other dogs will like things like balls and tug ropes and you know teddy bears and um, so yeah toys and again such a wide range just make sure that when you are getting them try and get them from reputable toy shops don't give them maybe toys that you don't know are for dogs because they might rip them there might be small parts like like with a kid and they might swallow them and um, so yeah just look for actual dog specific 
toys. Then a couple of other things in the startup costs that are, I suppose, optional, but they're things that we had to get for Frank as a greyhound, but also you might need to get depending on the type of dog that you have. So the first is a jacket. So with greyhounds, if you look at them, they're so skinny um, that they don't have a huge amount of body fat, which means that they feel the cold quite badly. So I think the rule is, is that if you have to put on a jacket, your dog has to put on a jacket. So at the moment, Frank isn't wearing one at all and won't be wearing one until probably September. But the one that we got is from a brand Brand called something Teddy Ginger Ted Ginger Ted Franco Ginger Ted and it's a fleecy lined one and it's a waterproof jacket he looks really cute and it's kind of a purpley color he looks super handsome and he's totally happy wearing that and what's great about it is yeah if he's out in the rain you know his head might get wet and his paws will get wet but it keeps the main part of his body warm and dry and I would always have been 100% against dressing animals and I still would be to a point if you have a dog that doesn't need to have a coat but what I learned is that greyhounds need them so that's why we had to spend money on it and um, the coat probably cost about 40 euro we got it as a present uh, but it's quite affordable and we got it online and they have a measuring guide so you can measure up your dog so you know if it's going to fit them you can also if you have a smaller dog than our one you can go to pet shops and try on the coats and make sure that the dog is happy and can move around another one is and i can't believe i'm saying this is dog pajamas so again this is very greyhound specific so if you have any other type of dog chances are you're not going to need pajamas <laughs> but greyhound pajamas so greyhounds get cold at night and our house in particular gets cold when it's cold weather, the temperature drops inside the house. So we have this little house coat for him that's fleecy that he wears when he's going to sleep. However, there's this amazing, I think our house coat was maybe a tenner or something, 10 to 20 euro. We bought it through our charity. But there's this brand which is called Hound Tees and they make t-shirts like long johns for dogs. So you can get them like just as like a little t-shirt. You can get them as like long paws or long legs at the front, long legs at the back. So many ranges, you can get hoodies and they're really cool and get stripy ones so for winter we're gonna get Frank one of these and um, they're pricey enough I think they probably will work out about 80 or 90 quid because it's they're expensive anyway because they're custom made or are they custom made they're expensive anyway and then we have to get them shipped from Australia so um, that is I have I'll put a link to them down below though they're amazing just go on their website and look at how happy the dogs look and again it, it's for them it's to keep them comfortable and to keep them warm at night another optional extra which I think shouldn't be an option optional extra is a car harness so if you plan to bring your dog in the car it's really important that your dog is strapped in if you think about it if you have a small little terrier and your terrier is in the back seat and you know you and your partner or whatever are in the front seat and you get into a car accident that terrier is either going to fly forward and hit into the back of your seat and injure him him or herself or the terrier is going to fly forward and hit somebody else in the car or the terrier is going to fly forward and go out the window with frank he's obviously a bigger dog so he sits on our back seat he used to be in our boot until we got the harness so he lies across our back seat but if frank if we stop suddenly or we were in a crash frank is going to kill one of us or he's gonna kill himself. So for us, we bought him this harness. It is, the brand is called a Clix Car Safe Dog Harness in size large. It's like seatbelt material. It's got like a chest plate at the front, seatbelt material. And then it has like a bit at the back, which you plug into a seatbelt thing, but then you can also loop a seatbelt through it. So we actually have Frank tied into the car's own seatbelt and this seatbelt. So if anything happens to him, the worst that's gonna happen is, so he lies sideways on the car, the worst that's gonna happen is he'll just like fall forward, but he won't even be able to come off the seat and he's safe. I think that they're, like I would really recommend them. And I don't think ours was that expensive. I think it was less than 20 euro for this car harness. Especially if you've, you know, if you have kids in the car as well, really important just to strap your dog in and make sure that whatever you get is safety tested. I think ours is safety tested as best as possible. We. We had found this other brand which were like really safety tested, but the chest plate was too wide for the type of dog that Frank is. But you know, um, if I can remember the name of them, I'll pop them down below. And the, the harness itself was excellent. So if you had a dog that isn't a greyhound, I would recommend that one. And then the last thing of your, I suppose your optional extras is a crate. So some people like to crate train their dogs. We bought a crate for Frank. We actually got a loan of a crate from someone, um, friends of ours, and it was too small. So then we got it, bought a crate which we need to now sell because Frank had no interest in it, didn't understand it. And for us, there was no, we just thought that he would like the crate because we thought that he lived in a crate, but actually in Ireland, they don't, they live in kennels. So he was like, what is this? So we got rid of the crate, completely just got rid of it. There was no point having it. Um, but again, the crates can vary in price. So depending on the size of dog that you have, um, you could also get carriers, which, you know, if you want to bring your dog, maybe on public transport, you might need a carrier, but again, they vary in price. 
obviously the smaller your dog the cheaper and the larger your dog the more expensive okay so now it's for the running costs of your dog so these are kind of monthly running costs slash yearly running costs so i assumed that when you got a dog it was food insurance and maybe go to the vets and for the most part that is what you're spending your money on monthly but there's a couple of hidden extra costs that i hadn't anticipated so first of all food as you can imagine there's a huge variant in the type of food and again very breed specific one thing that i didn't know about greyhounds is that actually i didn't know about dog food is that there's percentage protein in processed dog food so you know your complete foods like your kibble um, and there's a percentage protein in that and for greyhounds it's recommended to not give them more than 20 percent protein so to keep it in around the 18 19 20 percent some people say their dogs thrive on maybe 22 23 percent but like no more than that this is something i did not know so when we're looking for uh, food for frank we not only are looking at the ingredients to try and make sure that they're not like just animal and meat derivatives that they're actual meat um, we also try because greyhounds can have sensitive stomachs we try to give them like grain free and hypoallergenic food but we're also looking at the protein content so we would have had him on a particular brand of food which is quite cheap which is recommended for uh, retired greyhounds but i just didn't like the ingredients that were in it so we moved him to another type of food which was called burns which is apparently really good for a lot of dogs and in fairness his digestion was great on it however he uh, lost weight so now we have him on, on this brand which is called skinners and it's skinners field and trial and he has the lamb and rice flavor it's 20 percent protein it's hypoallergenic it's really good and um, his tummy is settled for the most part on it and we managed to like he just had to put on a little bit of weight when we got him so we fattened him up slightly using this food and um, we also supplement his food and um, we use porridge oats or sometimes i put in a raw egg or we might use raw meat or we never give him human food but that would be the equivalent of human food that we would give him and for us our bag of food which is 15 kg costs us 44 euro which i think is quite reasonable you can go you know like the original food that we fed him was costing 12.50 per 15 kg and then the the burns i think was about 60 euro per kg so it's actually a website which is called i think all about dog food which i can link for you and it's a particular it's basically it goes like you can type in the dog food and it tells you if there's any like uh negative ingredients in it that you shouldn't be giving to your dog it's really handy and if there's any reviews that people talk about so we found that the food that we have has pretty much okay ingredients the whole way through the food and frank really likes it the next one then is insurance so this might not be something that you want to get and i think it's harder to insure dogs over the age of five or six but this is something that was vital for us because we know from following other accounts to do with greyhounds that greyhounds can get injured and they can get nicks and cuts and scrapes and obviously touch wood um we hope that frank will never have any issues but we wanted to be safe in case he did and then what if we couldn't afford to get him the proper care and to put him down or whatever Ugh, all of that stuff so we have insurance for frank so it costs us 22.50 a month yes and um the there's different policies and different policies available wherever you probably live and then that usually what rises rises raises the price is the excess so we got a discount for the first year so we went for the lower excess but we probably up that for our next years and make our premiums a bit cheaper so we pay that once a month another thing then is grooming again very breed specific with greyhounds you're quite lucky they don't have that oil in their coat so they don't get that doggy smell that other dogs get you know like the wet dog smell and um, and they don't need to be groomed very often frank is actually just back from the groomers he went to the groomers and he's like fast asleep beside me here he went to the groomers and he got um his nails clipped uh, which probably has to be done about every three months and he got a full groom and his coat he's like a puppy he is so amazing but again probably what we'll do is it costs us 30 euro to get him groomed and it costs us 10 euro for a mini groom which is just like his nails and his ears and um, but for the 30 euro he gets a full bath smells like coconut oh he smells wonderful so we'll probably do that uh, once every three or four months so that's probably cost of maybe 90 to 120 euro a year again though if you have a different type of you might have a dog that needs to be groomed quite a lot and you can either bring it to a groomers or if you can't do that you might be able to buy specific mitts and brushes and um, and even nail clippers to be able to do the work yourself and particular dog shampoos but it is something that you really need to factor in is grooming because like especially if you're a big hairy dog 
um, and you need to brush it quite a lot. You need to get a decent quality brush for that so that your dog doesn't get mad and get all upset and, and you know, uncomfortable in himself. With us, we do have a, we have two brushes. We have like a kind of a flat brush and then we have like a myth thing that Frank really likes. And I would do that with him, especially when he's shedding, I do about once a week just to get some of the hair off. And also it's a nice bonding thing because I think he quite likes it. The next one then obviously is vet bills. So with most dogs, you'll only need to bring them to the vet once a year for their vaccinations and um, to get any specific, you know, if there's any medication or whatever. But obviously again, you may need to bring your dog to the vet a lot more. Um, vet bills can range, you know, anywhere up to, I think ours is about 40 or 50 euro. And then we always, we get him warming tablets um, and we get him like a worm thing that goes down the back of his neck that you put on every three months. And then he has these other tablets that he gets. Um, but yeah, so for us between, I think it costs us something like 50 euro every three months for all of this worming flea stuff. And um, so again, you're looking at 200 euro a year at uh, something I hadn't anticipated. It's not, when you when you break it down into like, you know, over the course of a year, it's not a huge amount of money, um, but it is something to consider. You know, you can't just, like you want your dog to have the best possible life. So you need to do things that the vet says, they need this worming tablets. Like with Frank, Frank eats snails and snails can carry lungworm and lungworm is fatal for dogs. So in order to protect against the lungworm, we have to give him this advocate product, which is the thing that goes on his neck. Um, and I just think that when you're gonna get a dog, you know, you wanna give it the best possible life. So you can't just scrimp and save on things like this. And it's something that you really, really need to factor in as a sort of day-to-day -day running costs of your dog. Another one then is kennels and or daycare or pet sitters. So with us, we leave Frank on his own during the day when we go to work. How it works out is that he's only on his own for six hours twice a week and for about five hours once a week. And the rest of the time there's somebody here he might be on his own for three four hours at a time at most and um, so we're okay for things like daycare or dog walkers but if you're working all week and both you and your partner and everyone's out of the house some dogs can get really destructive and if that is the case you may consider getting either a dog walker so dog walkers in ireland are usually about between 12 and 15 euro um, for a half hour walk they can vary in price but that's what i've seen and then there is doggy daycare where you drop your dog in and that's at a cost of about 20 to 25 euro a day. So it is a big cost, but again, is it better to do that and have a happy dog than have your dog at home destroying things? Obviously there's other types of dog, you know, you could build a run in your back garden for your dog, depending on your type of dog. We would never leave Frank outside, but a lot of breeds are totally okay with it. And that can give them a bit of stimulation. Or again, if you have a family relative, you know, that can pop in and see the dog, you might do it that way. Then boarding kennels, obviously if you have a relative that you can drop your dog to when you go away on holidays, that's amazing. But for us, we don't have that facility at the moment because any of the relatives that we do have have cats. So uh, we bring them to kennels and the kennels cost us 25 euro a night. You know, if you're bringing, if you're going on two week long holidays a year or whatever, you just have to think about the costs, like that's gonna add up. Again, you know, it's better to have your dog though somewhere that they like. Like we really like our kennels. The people who run it are amazing. And um, I put a link to the name of them below and actually they um, mind dogs for our, the charity. So Frank knew them when he went back to stay with them. But like they do loads of activities with the dog. Frank came home wrecked the last time. We'd only left him for like two or three nights. Shattered. Um, but again, it's another cost that you have to think of. So what I always think of now when I go on holidays, I think of, okay, so you're weighing up the cost of like the accommodation and how much it would be to stay in the city for that length of time and how much it costs to put the dog in kennels. So it's just an extra cost that we add in onto our holidays. And then the very last one is um, dog training and puppy training classes. So again, this you may never need this, might not be something that your dog needs. We're probably gonna look at doing dog training maybe for a little bit when we wanna teach recall because um, Frank doesn't have very good recall at the moment. But it, uh, sometimes when you get a puppy, it can be puppy socialization classes or training classes can be excellent. It's also a bonding thing and it's quite nice to be around other dog owners. Like dog owners are just such nice people. And when we meet them out, we're constantly chatting to them and everyone wants to talk about their dogs and people who love their dogs love other people who have dogs. So yeah, they can vary in price and it's always good to make sure that you go to a reputable um, dog trainer and especially like if you're maybe tied with a kennel, sometimes they can recommend a dog trainer and just see what kind of qualifications they have and what kind of style that they do for training their dogs. So there's um, there was a particular 
punishment training that used to happen where like dogs would get yelled at or whatever. And they've sort of found in recent years that positive reinforcement is a better way to train your dog. So instead of training it not to do something, it's to training it to do something else instead. So for instance, we wanted to train Frank to stay down when someone comes into the room. So what we did is we taught him Frankie up, so he jumps up and then we taught him Frankie down. So now when people come into the room, if I go Frankie down, Frankie down, and I keep saying it over, I'm trying to like not say it because he's asleep, but I keep, keep saying it over and over and over again, he keeps his paws on the ground. So it's a positive way of teaching him not to do something. And that's it. Whew, this video is quite long. Um, but yeah, those are the hidden costs of getting a dog. If there's any I missed, please pop them in the comments below, but it's just something to be aware of. If you liked this video, as always, please give it a big thumbs up and maybe share it with one of your friends, especially if you know anyone who's considering getting a dog, please share the information. Of course, if you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button and you can follow me on all of my social medias. Frank also has a social media, which I'm gonna stick up here so you can follow Frank. And that's kind of it for today's video. I'll be back with another video in one or two Sunday's time. Thanks for watching.